Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Wednesday evening, seven days. Probably the biggest science news this week was the successful touchdown of the InSight robot on the Martian surface. After an anxious seven minute wait, the probe touched the red planet, which will be the first probe to be dedicated to exploring the interior of Mars. Geologists will want to know everything they can about how the planet is constructed from surface to core. We are all incredibly excited to see what results InSight produces, and it could bring us useful information to set the slate for a mission to Mars. In other news, it's climate change again, unfortunately. Anyway, let's get into it. For the first time in four years, the CO2 levels in the atmosphere have risen. The Emissions Gap Report says that economic growth is responsible for the rise that happened in 2017, and in order to stick to the Paris Climate Agreement, global emissions must peak by 2020. The effects are seen as irreversible, and unfortunately the analysis suggests that this will not be reached until 2030. That being said, things are being done, and it's just more that needs to be done to save the planet. Fossils from Poland that were described this week have revealed a very interesting insight into a unique period in Earth's history. Lisa Wikiboyani is a giant elephant sized dichinodont reaching incredible sizes of 9 tons and 4.5 metres long. Dichinodonts are members of Therapsida and are a sort of stem mammal, meaning that they are related to the group but aren't actual members. Lisa Wikia represents the largest non-dinosaur tetrapod known from the whole of the Triassic, and it significantly alters how we must view the mega herbivores of the time, in addition to showing that stem mammals actually managed to get to huge sizes that, as far as we know, were not reached again in mammalians until the Eocene. Some new research was published this week that looked at fossils of the giant Siberian rhinoceros Elasmotherium sibericum, and greatly extended its extinction date. Previously, it was thought to have died out about 100,000 years ago, and therefore it was not considered a casualty of the Quaternary Megafaunal Extinction. However, some specimens that have just been dated have indicated this species was still around 39 to 35,000 years ago, and it likely was wiped out due to the changes in the climate at this time. Analysis of the animal's DNA has also cleared up where this lineage fits onto the rhino evolutionary tree. Finally, the earliest definite evidence of parasitism in a particular insect group has been discovered, with the identification of twisted wing insect larva preserved in some Burmese amber, aged around 99 million years old. This extends back the history of parasitism in these animals by some 50 million years, and also indicates that these insects have undergone a kind of evolutionary stasis over the last 100 million years, not changing very much at all during this time. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. If you haven't already and you want to learn more about the wonderful life around you, feel free to subscribe. And if you have or are going to, we'll see you on Sunday.